frugal crafter and I'm waving my arms around like a crazy person because I made some cool bracelets and I'm gonna show you how to make them too. We're using a fish style knot and fabulous cord from Paper Mart. You can check them out online at www.papermart.com. They're our sponsor today. And these rolls of rat tail cord are 200 yards long and they cost about 10 bucks or less if you're buying a large multiple of items from them so um i highly recommend you pick up this product there because it's not anywhere near this price anywhere else in fact the closest place i found i think had it for about 15 to 18 dollars a spool so really you can't go wrong it comes in all the colors of the rainbow so um i do suggest you check it out especially if you're teaching classes or you make a lot of jewelry or you do a lot with kids because the size of this um cording is great and you can burn the end so you get a really nice stringing tip so it's great for stringing pony beads for the children and it's really great for doing these knotting techniques for older kids or grown-ups uh so let's go to the table i'm going to show you how to make these really cool bracelets okay here I have the supplies to make our really fun fish knot bracelets uh, we're gonna use some paper beads um, I did a tutorial on how to make these chunky Pandora style beads um, on my YouTube channel yesterday I will put a, a link under the video so you can click on that and check it out we're going to need some rat tail cord from Paper Mart, and um, they have the best price around. It's like cheaper by half than a lot of the other places. And you're going to want three to four feet of um, two colors. So I'm just going to snip that off. I'm going to use black and um, cream or ivory because it kind of goes with these tribal looking beads that I made from cardstock and pattern paper. Um, these beads I glazed with Mod Podge and uh, these I did with ultra thick embossing enamel um, which is a really chunky embossing powder so you can use um, either that or you can just use large hole beads that you can get at the craft store it's completely up to you but it's fun to kind of make the um, make the paper beads and then you're really making this entire craft yourself start to finish um, you can do a lot of the same knot work and crafts that you would do with paracord with the rat tail cord and you'll end up with a more um, Oh, what do you want to say? A more elegant finish because it is a finer cord. And what I like to do is burn the ends and keep the cord in the blue part of the flame, which is the part closest to the lighter. And that way you won't discolor that. So if you look at that, that ivory cord, there is no, um, there's no discoloration there. If you use the yellow part of the flame, you're going to end up uh, burning the ends and it's going to make it brown or black. And um, that really detracts from the appearance. We probably will need to trim these ends again. So if you do end up burning it, don't worry. We're going to trim it again when we finish it off. Very rarely does it happen to end, does the bracelet end exactly where you want it to. You usually have a little left over. All right. So you need to make sure that on one end of the, um, one end of the string you're going to make sure that it's it's just a little bit longer than your clipboard so i've got a clipboard here with a piece of gray card on top so the background of my decorated clipboard isn't distracting and the other ends you can leave a little bit longer because that's what you're going to tie so then what you want to do is just make a loop all right what you're going to end up doing is actually putting a bead on there and gluing it in place so that we kind of have a stopper for the knot so i am just going to slide on this bead and go through all of the strands. If you don't have a bead to use at the top, you can simply just um, tie all the strands together in an overhand knot. That'll work just as well. But I think this gives a little bit uh, more of an elegant finish. And you wanna leave about a finger width here for a um, for room for the toggle to, uh, to go through so at the end when we put that last bead on there, we get a hole big enough to slip that bead through. Um, now, I you can use your Helmar 450 for this, but I want to make sure that it um, it is secure right away, so I am going to use my hot glue gun. And I'm just going to squeeze a little bit here into the hole, and then I'm going to pull my bead over it, so it's actually going to really trap it well in there, and the glue is going to end up on the inside. So I had slid it down just a little bit to account for the fact that I was going to have to move that up and just give that a second for it to dry. So the long strands are what we're going to end up tying. So those are going to be held out to your left. I know it looks like to your right because I'm working upside down here, but um, you're going to hold those out to your left. And the, um, the two shorter strings are going to be clipped down to the bottom of your clipboard. All right, I think that's 
cool enough that I can clip it under. Set all that to the side. I do have my uh, my Helmar 450 on its side because I want to make sure that glue is ready when I am ready to use it. So I'm going to clip that at the top of the clipboard. We're going to we're going to um, actually string on the beads that we plan on using for this project. So I've got these three tribal looking paper beads. Oh, there, look, I still have all three. I even uh, flung them across the room. That's always good. I'm going to string these three on, and then um, it'll just be easier in the future when we want to slide them up. If you had smaller beads, you might need like five, so just keep that in mind when you're planning your project. And then I'm just going to clip these down to the bottom of my clipboard. And you want to clip it kind of loosely because you're going to need um, you're gonna need a little bit of slack to be able to lift that up and get those um, wire those uh, strings across. All right, so now I'm going to zoom in because I really want you to be able to see what I'm doing here with the strings. So there's other ways to make the fish knot, but I find this to be the easiest. So you've got your two strings out to the left. It could be out to the right, whatever you want to do. Then you take that top string, see how there's two strings there, the white one's on the top. I'm going to lift that up. I'm going to go over the first string, under the second string, around that second string, and then under the first string. Now my black string is on top and my white is on the bottom. So then, always working with that top string, I'm picking up the black string going over the first, under the second, over the second, under the first. And I just keep repeating that pattern. Now, generally, if you see a demonstration of the fish knot, they are um, they're having your strings kind of coming out from either side and going into the center. And I tried that method and I was fine, I was being getting very confused as to what um, what string I was supposed to pick up next. I was I found I was all out of sorts and I found this method to be a lot easier. So you want to make about seven or eight of these and then you're gonna slide up your first bead. Alright, what are we at here? We're at about six. All right, so on this this time, I am going to go over the first one, under the second one, and leave it so I've got a string on each side, and I'm going to slide up that first bead. Then I'm going to continue making the knot with the white string, going over the second and under the first. That still is our bottom string, so we pull this down, and we begin again as if that's our top string, which it is, and we continue the pattern. You're going to do this until you have all the beads pulled up and secured. And you can make this as long as you want. You can make it a little longer for an anklet or for a man's wrist or a smaller for a child's wrist or somewhere in between for a lady's wrist. Completely up to you. And when you think you have it long enough, then we're going to um, put on our final bead, which will be the bead for the toggle. All right, so I'm going to test this on my wrist and see how long it is. My wrists are fairly small, so if I'm going to make this to sell, I have to make it a little bit longer so it will fit most people. I think I want to do a couple more, um, a couple more rounds of that braid. So clip it back in and clip my two ends down. Try not to get confused over what your, uh, what ends were down and what ends you were, what ends you were uh, wrapping. Continue this pattern here. A couple more rounds. And so, you know, you can really play with this. If you run out of the uh, the strings here, you can tuck it into the middle with a little glue, and you can just knot these two together until you get to the right length. Which uh, that's why I had. That's what I did with the other ones because I didn't. I was kind of stingy with my cord, and I didn't cut quite enough. All right, I think this will be good. Now, I can simply slide on this last bead that I'm going to use for the um, the toggle. I'm going to go through these ends here. Could have trimmed them all the same length to shove them through at the same time, but this will work. Get the last one in there. I used a number size, a nine knitting needle to make these beads, these paper beads, and they were plenty, plenty big. That last one doesn't want to go through. Come on, you. There we go. 
And then I'm going to make sure my last few braids are pushed up nice and tight. And then slide this bead up as closely as I can. I can leave the, um, the strings a little bit longer so I have kind of like a, a dangle and I could even add beads to the end of each of these if I want for some flair. Uh, but right now what I want to make sure I do is get some glue in there. And you know what? Got that grip of glue ball blob there. I think that I'm actually going to use hot glue for this because it's going to be pretty easy to, uh, to slide that bead up. Just, just filling that cavity with hot glue. And I'm sliding that up and uh, that will be ready in just a second. So um, since I do have quite a supply of paper beads, I think I will actually tie a paper, a paper bead into each of one of these um, ends and then I will snip them off with a few of my uh, paper beads. And I decided I didn't want them all the same. Um, so I am going to just slide these in here and I figure about how long I want them to dangle. I just tie a little knot. Then I will trim the knot close and burn the end in the blue part of the flame. After it's melted down a bit, I'm going to grab something metal and just shove the uh, burnt part into the knot. And then I've got a really nice, uh, nice secure bead there. So you want to repeat that for each of these strands if you want to have a dangle on each of the strands. Well, there you have it, the finished bracelet. Uh, just remember to burn your ends after you tie the knots. And uh, to close this lovely bracelet, simply push the um, final uh, accessory beads here through. And remember, you don't have to, uh, to put these beads on if you don't want to. You could cut the... Uh, you could cut the cord flush and burn the ends, that's fine too. But if you do want the tassels, you will have to feed those beads in through first and then slide that loop right over that last bead in your, um, in your bracelet pattern. And this gives you a really nice secure closure. And honestly, I just opened and closed this bracelet a minute ago and it went so slick and easy. And then as soon as I turned the camera on, of course it is difficult. <laughs> And there you go. I think it's just such a lovely, um, lovely bracelet with lots of flair, and I do hope you try making it. I'd love it if you checked out our sponsor, Paper Mart. You can find them online at www.papermart.com, where we make you look even better. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting. <laughs>